did it, you stepped up to the steel FS240, you knew your property demanded the biggest power, the baddest machine, and this thing is here for you. There's a couple bigger, right? We can get into the FS360, FS560, but those things are big, those things are heavy. What I like about the 240 is we're putting out 2.3 horsepower, but it's still coming in under 15 pounds. So that balance, especially when we get ourselves a nice double harness, or maybe the extreme harness right here, this thing is gonna be comfortable to use. So let's go over today. You've got the FS240, what do you need to do? What do you need to know? How are you gonna get the most life out of it? We'll start at the top end. We'll start at the fuel end, okay? So this is mixed fuel. It's running hard, it's running hot. Let's run good fuel, right? Let's stick with the high octane ethanol free fuel, please. And I'm gonna run the steel ultra mix right here, okay? One of these to a gallon if that's the size you picked up. Or maybe this is something that you're not gonna use very often and the right thing to run is steel moto mix. If you're not running this all the time, that's fine, I get it. It's fairly expensive, but maybe for hibernation you may wanna consider it. Steel moto mix, great way to go. Let's look at the rest of the top end of this for maintenance real quick. Right on the top right here, I've got this little screw I'm going to take off. With the tool that came with it, i got my T27 Torx wrench. Take this screw off. And a couple more turns. And hiding under here is my spark plug. There we go. The first time you take this spark plug boot off, Make sure you kind of wiggle it off of there carefully so that it comes off right. Otherwise, you'll end up ripping it off. Just a little tip, trick. So, spark plug, easy, I'm to it. And the reason they put this cap on it is just to really protect you from it, protect the spark plug itself. And you're, sometimes your elbow kind of rests there depending on the model that you have. And it just sits back in, tighten that up. Let's look at the air filter. I love the air filter on this thing. You do not see an air filter of this quality very often on a string trimmer. So two screws come loose, off pops the cover, and we have a vertical pleated paper element air filter with a large capacity. This can fit a lot of material in here, which is good, right? Keeps that air filter life longer, and it stops a lot of material. So you're gonna really avoid ingesting dirt, but that doesn't mean just because it's good, you shouldn't take a look at it. So every once in a while, depending on the use, you know, I know some of my heavy, heavy commercial operating customers, guys that have, you know, eight hours of runtime on these a day, they clean these every two days. Yeah, it's crazy. This is a high running machine, like 12,000 RPM running machine. So it's sucking in a lot of stuff. And when you're running a, a line head or a, a grass blade out there in a high material, you got a lot of debris flying around. So take it out. Tap it out, can I see good light through it? If it looks ugly, throw a new one in. It is worth it. You know you made an investment to a high quality machine and you wanna get the most out of it. All right, pop this cover back on. So I talked about fuel and avoiding ethanol and I hit on that a lot. Here's the problem that I see with ethanol. It separates, the alcohol in the gas separates and it causes corrosion, it also absorbs moisture. Again, that'll cause corrosion and running problems. Okay, here's something that I also see happen to the FS240. It's got so much power that I have a hard time keeping that trigger pulled solid all the time for hitting the higher RPMs. I just kind of want to lightly trim around stuff. And if I do that too long, what'll happen is I'll plug up the exhaust port. That's right here. You come up close. Right there, there's a screen in there. That screen, if I'm not running this engine hard, or if my air filter is very dirty, or if I've mixed my fuel too heavy, that screen will plug up. And you'll fire this thing up and it'll sound just really lethargic. It doesn't want to get going. It's, it just can't accelerate. Pop that screen out. Usually you can do it with the other side of the Torx wrench that came with your tool. Pop it out, check it out. It's going to be plugged. Very easy, burn it off, good to go. There is on this a winter summer shutter that allows more heat from the engine over to the carburetor, the intake side to prevent carburetor icing. I personally have never been out in cold enough weather brush cutting that I've needed this. So I'd probably ignore this. If I can give you a piece of advice, I would ignore this uh, until it causes you a problem. Because if you switch it, it can actually end up biting you bad. 
You've got some adjustment here. Let's look here on the shaft of this. You've got some adjustment to your harness hook. Okay, I can loosen this screw and I can move this up and down. You wanna find where to place this so that it balances out for you, right? You do not wanna have any heavy weight on the end of this. You want it to just kind of rest and sit and be comfortable because you're gonna be in it for an hour or more. Something hidden right in here, little screwdriver that came with it. In the throttle trigger is a screw, flat headed screw. I got it right there. And as this throttle cable stretches and I don't get full acceleration, I can simply tighten the screw and take up that slack in the throttle cable. So kind of hidden there. A lot of people don't know about that little trick for you there. Before we go down to the bottom end, I want to talk about starting. Okay. So prime it one, two, three, four, five. I can't flood it by priming it. Five is my number though. And then I have my choke. There's my choke knob right there. I push in and I twist counterclockwise. Now the choke is set. I pull the rope. It's ready to start, right? This is just a momentary kill switch. I shut it off, but it returns to, to start. Pull the rope two times, maybe three. It's going to fire up. As soon as it starts, click the trigger. It shuts the choke off. Typical steel thing. Really awesome. Makes it simple. Keeps you from flooding the machine. All right. This has power. We're in heavy grass. Maybe the AutoCut 25-2 is not the right head for you. So we want to take it off. We're going to take a pin like this. This came with your machine when you bought it. If not, you can probably use a 16 penny nail or something like that. I want to get up close. It's going to drop right in here. I hold it in with my finger. I rotate until hear that clicks down. Now I cannot spin the head. That's what I need it to do. Clockwise, whoop, we'll spin the head off. Once we spin that head off, I now have a blank canvas that allows me to put on different trimmer heads as well as blades. Make sure if you take this off, it's fine. Just make sure you put it back on right. I see sometimes this doesn't get put back on and it kind of causes a world of hurt, it causes a problem. Uh, really makes it a pain in the butt to lock the gearbox and take the head off that you put on after. So let's put a blade on here. The FS240 with the bike handles came blade ready, meaning it came with everything you need to run a blade, not the blade itself. So a brush knife is a common blade to run on this, okay? I have here with me the steel tri-blade, we'll call it, their brush knife. It's a good blade, I'll tell you. There's some blades I like better. We'll show you those in another video. So this blade is simply gonna sit on this arbor and center, keep it from moving, and then I came with this UFO disc looking thing. It actually is a built-in washer. If yours didn't come with the built-in washer, there's two styles. You'll figure that one out. Okay, this sits down on it. And then I take the nut. Remember, I spun that head off clockwise, so it's reverse thread. So counterclockwise, tighten that back up. Make sure that the blade stays in place and doesn't come off center. You're going to have quite the vibration. It'll tell you really quick and that... Hopefully you'll stop and fix it, avoid having a major problem. Okay, that's how to change from the blade, change it back to a, to a line head. There is one maintenance point down here. That's right here. This is actually on all steel straight shaft trimmers. I've got this grease plug right here. I'm gonna unscrew this. And it's either a 13 millimeter or the T27 Torx. Out comes this screw, boom. And then I have a tube of grease that steel makes. Costs about five bucks. Threads right in, a light squeeze. Let's do this real quick. Let's give you a visual. Pop the tin foil off. Take this screws right in like so. Give it a light squeeze. And I'll usually rotate the head a couple times, give it another light squeeze, and that's it. That's how you grease this. This head should be greased every 50 hours. How much is 50 hours? I don't have a timer on this, do I? No, you don't. Let's just go with, for most people, probably annually is enough. If you're a heavy commercial operator, you probably should do it once a month, just to be safe. Doing that, you will get maximum life out of this gearbox, unless you do something dumb like hitting a steel fence post with this blade. So there we go, the FS240 brush cutter. 
We know about the air filter, the spark plug, the spark arrester, the proper fuel, the throttle cable adjustment, the harness strap adjustment, how to put a blade on, how to grease it, and don't forget, safety when we're out there running this, get a helmet, a face shield, earmuffs, run a face shield with this thing. This thing will throw some stuff, right? It's got some big power. It's gonna pick something up, throw it your way. I probably missed a few things, so it's always a good idea to refer back to your owner's manual. It came with the machine. Or stop by your local dealer, we'll go over it with you. Make sure you're doing the right thing so you can get the most out of it. Hey, I hope you love your steel FS240 brush cutter. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.